What is up you guys, my name is Ryan. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Today is gonna be a very simple video. It's gonna be vintage pickups. Uh, I did wanna mention that pickup videos have been doing relatively well on my channel, so I do plan on doing more of them. Maybe just elaborating more on each piece so it doesn't feel like I'm just showing off what I have. These are some vintage pieces I've been accumulating over the past half year, basically since the start of quarantine. I've been really into vintage. I have a lot of friends in the community, the vintage community, that collect and curate as well. So hopefully I'm planning on doing some videos with those people in the future. I collect all different types of vintage, ranging from 90s to Y2K to like all the way to the 40s, 50s. I'm just gonna jump into it. Essentially, I have a shit ton of tops and outerwear and one pair of bottoms. As you can see, it's hanging right behind me. This is a pair of vintage Levi's 501 denim. So depending on the time period, you may have a 501 that's a lot slimmer or, you know, in a different time period, it could have been a lot more straight. I don't know which time period dictates like the fit of the Levi's 501, but I just know that they vary in sizing and fit uh, all throughout time because Levi's has changed the pattern uh, throughout history. This pair is what I believe to be from the 80s. It's a red line selvage pair, meaning that it has a selvage, selvage uh, denim is generally a lot more expensive. It's a lot more commonly uh, found in Japanese raw denim nowadays, but American Levi's were doing that quite a long time ago. I believe, unless it's LVC, you can only find red lines on American made Levi's. This pair is definitely from the 80s. It has a lowercase e and uh, no stamping on the back of the buttons as far as I can tell at least. It is a little bit stiff for some reason, which I don't know why, but um, essentially, this is a this is just a very faded pair of Levi's I've been wanting for a while. I've been wanting red lines for quite some time. I like to cuff my pants, so I ended up getting these in a 34 inseam. Uh, I think the waist is the the label is missing. The size label is missing, so I don't know exactly what the label size was. I'm assuming it was a 36, and someone wore it so much and washed it to the point to where to the point where it became a 34. 34, so 34 waist, 34 inseam. Generally, I'm a 30 inseam, preferably. I like my pants to sit right on top of my shoes, but with denim, it can vary. Uh, I do like to cuff my denim as well, and what better pant to cuff than a pair of red lines? So um, I think it's gonna look really cool with derbies and boots, and uh, it definitely has a lot of work that needs to be done in terms of repairs. There's distressing in the crotch, there's like, um, there's separation on the pockets, so there's separation on some of the pockets um, and someone has already reinforced the tops of the pockets. So I definitely need to reinforce different parts of this pant, but I think honestly it's gonna look even better with those repairs. That's an awesome pickup. That's the only bottom I have in this video and I'm gonna move on to tops now. So the next item is a t-shirt. It's really simple. I was on eBay one day looking for like faded uh, gray and black t-shirts and I happened to come across this one. I like the font on the front. It says Destroyer. I believe this is from it a random truck company. It is vintage, uh, the fade on it is immaculate, uh, and there's distressing all throughout, which is what I really wanted and was looking for in a t-shirt. The only issue here is that it's more of a blue-based gray than it is uh, like just black or mono monochrome, so I do wish it was a little bit more on the black side, but uh, nonetheless, it's still a cool t-shirt and worn inside out, it looks cool too. Uh, and I'll probably use this to substitute any gray t-shirts I have in my wardrobe. Well, let me give you a closer look. It's a screen printed tee. It says Destroyer in white. Uh, label's cut out, but the neck is perfectly tattered up. Nothing on the back, really simple. So, really cool tee. Nothing much else to say. Fits like an XL, drapey, kind of flowy cotton. So this next piece was something I was really excited to pick up. This is a 50s, 60s bowling shirt with absolutely amazing detail. As you can tell, the fit of it is very wide, very boxy, cut short and it has this amazing feltish leopard print on the front. It's composed of like a polyester on the sleeves, the collar, uh, and there's chain stitching all throughout this piece. Right on the front, there's a uh, chain stitched old gold in gold. Uh, really interesting elastic on the sides of the shirt to help it fit better. And then on the back is this huge giant graphic of a bowling ball ramming through a few pins, looking all surprised. It says uh, strikers, old gold strikers, really cool, really interesting. And honestly, I've seen a lot of bowling shirts from, 
you know, the 50s, 60s, and generally they have like a name on it, like Sally or Susan or something, or Jeff or some random name. So I'm really happy that this has the brand name on it as opposed to a person's name because I feel like that way I can wear it a little bit more and not feel weird about it. Also, the chain stitching is a crazy nice effect. I don't see many shirts with chain stitching, let alone a full graphic that's chain stitched. And uh, the contrast placket is just really exciting. It has a lot of attitude, so I'm definitely gonna be wearing this a lot more. Also, you can tell this bowling shirt and shirts like it have probably been referenced a lot by designer brands. Uh, Prada is one brand to know, known to be doing a lot of boxy wide bowling shirts right now. So um, that's another thing I really love about vintage that not many people know is that when it comes to referencing and taking ideas from past garments, designer does that a lot. It, it delves into the archives of what used to be made and takes the silhouettes or the cuts of certain things and changes it a little bit and reinterprets it or reimagines it. Uh, so a lot of things are actually inspired by articles of the past and that's what is really unique about vintage. And oftentimes if you score a vintage piece like this, no one else is gonna have it because the person that did originally own it, um, well one, there's probably really limited runs and two, uh, that person may have donated it and may be gone forever. So when you find a vintage piece as unique as this, you gotta hold on to it for dear life, for sure. Um, and I'm really happy to pick this one up. So another category of vintage I really love is that of like a vintage, like vintage faders, yeah, but vintage faded crewnecks or really softened crewnecks. You don't find a lot of those, um, or at least in my opinion, I, I'm very particular about the ones that I purchase. And this is from a brand that I actually really enjoy and I think it is honestly overlooked in the, in the vintage community. And that's polo. A lot of vintage polo is not only super wearable, super Americana, um, but it, they also, as a brand, used a lot of rare, uh, sometimes very unusual materials. And also on top of that, a lot of polo, because polo was such a popular brand, they were making so many diffusion labels and so many sub brands that the types of garments you can find from vintage polo are the the variety is vast there's so many different types of uh so many different types of clothing so uh this is pretty normal pretty like a basic american vintage crew neck but i've seen like crazy like jackets like fireman clasp jackets i've seen like cool fisherman's vests crazy tech pants and, and cargo pants so um, when it comes to polo, I think that's definitely slept on in how diverse their product catalog was. But anyways, I digress. This is a vintage polo crew neck, faded blue, absolutely beat and worn in. The cuffs are distressed. Um, flag on the front. I'm kind of weird about American flags. Like I probably, I feel like I shouldn't be wearing it because I'm not happy with like the state that the country's in, but also like. I kind of wear it ironically. I, I wear this very casual with like shorts and denim um, and like a pair of sneakers. So I don't I don't really take it too seriously like my fit when I wear this. It's very chill. So this among some other items from this pickups is actually from my dear friend Tyler at Designer Dad. I'm gonna put his Instagram and a couple photos up right here. Uh, that guy is absolutely amazing. Very close friend of mine and he actually hooked it up for me um, and I'll point out the other items he gave me. One being a grail of mine that I've wanted for quite some time, but I just wanted to give him a quick shout out. So moving on, uh, there are actually quite a few crewnecks that I accumulated over this uh, period of time. I got this online. This is a 1967 short sleeve crewneck sweatshirt. The cotton on this is absolutely super insanely soft. It actually reminds me of my Virginia Creeper uh, raglan cut shirt in the same silhouette, uh, like a baseball raglan with short sleeves and made out of a sweatshirt material. This one's actually softer than that. Uh, the graphic is perfectly peeled. I love the cartoony looking vintage, like authentic cartoon vintage is super cool to me. So this one has like some rose, it says rose bowl, rose bowl boiler makers. Um, and some like ripped little like 1960s guy on the front with like a hammer. Really interesting. There's distressing and paint splatter and fades throughout this crew neck. And honestly, you can tell it's from the 60s from this little cutesy square script tag. It's by 
spring foot products. It's a size large, a 42-44. Really cool. And it's not a silhouette I would normally pick up, but I feel like it makes me look a little bit look, look a little bit more, you know, built. Um, and I like the cut of it. It's really interesting. So wearing this with denim and like a pair of combat boots is something I would definitely do. Another page I wanted to shout out is Thrifts with Blake. He actually inspired me to pick up some of these 50s, 60s sweaters that I'm showcasing today. His curation is out of this world. He has some of the craziest, rarest vintage clothing. So if you haven't checked him out, I'm gonna put some photos and his Instagram at on here as well. I definitely wanna make a video with that guy someday because his style is really crazy too. Um, very well put together guy. And he's, he's just like an overall nice person, so. This is another 50s, 60s crew neck. Uh, this one says available 84. Presumably that was whatever sports athlete uh, athlete's number this was, jersey number or whatever. Uh, it is a double V stitched neck. So that's one way you can tell if a crew neck is vintage is uh, if it has this double V shape right here. Also including like the cotton composition and like how thick it is and you know the quality of the print. But yeah, what I really like about 50s, 60s crew necks in particular is that they have these extremely long cuffs uh, very nice sturdy cotton kind of similar to like that of a reverse weave if not better a wide fit like an actual wide waist pit to pit and then it goes straight down and then it also has uh, like a, a semi crop like generally they're pretty cropped in nature so the fit of 50s 60s crew necks I'm absolutely in love with as well this one's really interesting though a white and green crew neck you never really see that too often so I you know when I picked it up I was like I originally picked it up to sell, uh, but when I picked it up, I was like, I have to keep this. It looks amazing. It looks really good with like browns and tans and even light blues. But uh, yeah, really cool, interesting piece of clothing right here. So this one's the last vintage crew neck. This is a 50s, 60s double V neck um, crew neck as well. This one says NY and it looks like it was like patched over or there was a print on it and it got faded off. So it's very tonal, it's just a darker, navy blue on top of a navy blue crew neck. This one, similar to the white crew neck I just showed, has very long cuffs, um, a very wide body, and then a very cropped length. So, and also um, the neck is almost square-like. It's, it's very interesting. They have like a very, it's not rounded, but it's also not angular, but it's wide. So they have wide neck um, openings. So I just thought that was really interesting. This is the NY print right there. Very nice cotton, honestly perfect for like the fall winter when you don't want to wear like a full on jacket but you also want to be warm enough to go outside. These next two items are from my friend Tyler as well. I've been on the search for vintage cardigans for quite some time. In addition to mohair knitted things, I really love like just the overall look of like a beat distressed cardigan. This one is a very nice light pale pastel blue. The thing with this one is that it's not itchy whatsoever. Usually when you buy uh, wool cardigans or you know anything made of wool that's vintage they feel slightly itchy they feel kind of like if you've ever felt like a vintage Pendleton flannel that's exactly how itchy they are even if it's a knit and has that stretch doesn't matter it's still itchy this one is hardly itchy at all it's actually quite comfortable quite soft to, to the touch it's from Pebble Beach of California I think it's about I think it's from the 50s or 60s, honestly, just from the fit alone. This one's a size 42, fits like a large. It's actually made of 100% imported alpaca, which is extremely soft uh, and known to be a lot more soft than uh, your traditional wool. So I'm really happy about that. Beautiful color, like I said, and yeah, there's, a, there's not much else to say. It's a little bit tattered up, but I have no problem with that. I think when it has vintage tattering or when it's vintage and it's tattered, there's a lot more character to it and makes it a lot more fun to style. So going back to my note about how slept on and bizarre this brand could be, um, this is another polo piece. This has been my absolute grail ever since I saw Tyler wore it. I have like a very old picture from like a few years ago uh, of him in it. He's just a happy boy. I'll put it right here. And I, you know, I've wanted that cardigan ever since, but he definitely made it clear that it was on his note, not for sale uh, list. But I recently was able to buy it off of him uh, I got it for a pretty good deal as well. What's really crazy about this cardigan is that it is composed of 50% linen, 34% ramy, 14% silk, and then 2% other fibers. So the composition alone is super unique. It's crazy that to see a cardigan made out of so many different 
um, materials that isn't just wool. Not even to mention, there's an absolutely beautiful plaid or tartan pattern right here with the cute double pockets, very clueless-like, very, um, I don't know how to describe it, very like vintage golfer-esque. Uh, uh, and yeah, I just love how it fits. The sleeves are extremely long, so they kind of land right here. It looks really good with like silver popping out and like a nice button up or just a plain white tank top uh, is how I like to wear it. It's oddly a size small, but it fits me and I'm like a large XL. So do with that information what you want. But um, yeah, this cardigan, I will never ever get rid of this cardigan. It looks amazing. It feels amazing because it's silk composition and it's not just wool and it's linen too. It's actually really breathable and uh, I can wear this during the hot weather. I think I wore this on like a 80 or 90 degree weather day and I was completely fine. It felt like I'm just wearing a long sleeve if anything. So yeah, I was really excited to pick that up from him. This is the cardigan up close by the way, if you want to see the label. Here we go. Beautiful, beautiful. Look how see-through that is. So this next piece I actually picked up at the thrift. This jacket style was really popular probably a few years ago. like. I would say 2014 to 2018 was probably its run of the most popular jacket uh, for quite some time next to like the leather biking jacket or biker jacket. Uh, this one is unique however because it's super cropped and it's very wide. It's very Hyder Ackerman-esque and I think that's why I am keeping it is because it just gives off a much more interesting cut and silhouette. Uh, it is vintage. It's from the 50s or 60s. Well, 50s to 70s, I think. It has a Scoville zipper, which is a uh, vintage zipper brand. It's by, I think the branding is Speedwalk and Sons. It has the traditional aviator uh, jacket, military grade uh, pocket patch right there that indicates what it is. But yeah, the silver zipper, the wide boxy cropped fit, and the fact that it's reversible is definitely some factors that um, made me want to keep this. Originally, I was just going to buy it to sell, but I, it's... It's a beautiful jacket and I think I should keep it in my wardrobe for just a bit. It'll be really great for layering season as well. The inside says WC Hunter, so that must be whoever owned this previously. Uh, so I can't really, I mean I could wear it on the orange side, but I probably wouldn't. Alright guys, we are at the end of the video. This is the last piece that will conclude this collection of pickups. And I hope you guys did enjoy this video, but this right here is a vintage Sugajan souvenir jacket from I believe the 1960s, 1950s, po uh, possibly earlier. I acquired this from a very popular vintage collector by the name of Wesley on Instagram. I've been following Wesley ever since I was in high school. His style, his sense of fashion, and the things that he collects is out of this world. I've been a fan for quite some time. He's made a transition from extremely designer like Celine Saint Laurent, Raph Simmons over to almost completely vintage. Now he drives a vintage motorcycle. He's a very huge adopter of vintage goods um, while still maintaining the high-end look. So he, he gives off the Saint Laurent vibe very well. I'll put his Instagram in a couple pictures right here. Uh, I believe he actually just modeled for Celine not too long ago, but that guy is insane. He'll do an occasional story sale, and one day I was just on my phone and happened to see it, and he uh, was posting this crazy collection of jackets and this one I'm not generally a fan of souvenir jackets because it reminds me of like 2015 Urban Outfitters but uh, the fact that it's authentically vintage and the color alone this like pink rose-ish uh, silk or satin or what I think it's silk this pink rose-ish silk with the really nice metallic embroidery and then uh, this absolutely stunning navy blue cream and orange ribbing they just all blend so well together. Um, this one's a size large. It's from Korea, presumably, just because it says Korea on it. Um, authentic vintage military souvenir jacket. And it has dragons down the arm, dragons on the chest, dragon on the back. Very, very prominent Asian dragons throughout this jacket. And I'm absolutely in love with it. Uh, the fit is similar to that other bomber. It's very cropped, very wide. Uh, the sleeves are long enough to cover my wrists almost. So uh, yeah, I mean, this cotton alone has aged so well. It's extremely soft and this silk has faded nicely in specific areas. It's just a crazy piece, man. I'm really happy to have it in my collection. I haven't styled it yet because it hasn't been cold enough, but I'm really excited to wear it once it does. If you like pickups, please let me know. 
please let me know what pickup you like the most. And also, if you're new to the channel, welcome. Give me a, give me a subscribe, like, comment, tell me what you think. I'm planning on making more videos soon, just not only pickups. I kind of want to, you know, space each out. Every other video is probably a pickup video, but I want to do like analysis. I want to do like, I don't really know, like a styling video, stuff like that. So let me know. It's kind of a weird time right now because of COVID, but uh, I'm doing my best to be consistent. So, you know, what better time than now? Thank you guys so much. If you don't already follow me on Instagram, check me out. It's Ryan M. Kwong and also Rotten Closet for my store and styling. Okay. I'll see you guys later. Bye.